So now we have the DNA from our corn chip sample. And in the next step, we're going to do something called PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. In PCR, we're able to make millions of copies of a specific piece of DNA. Now, if this corn chip did come from genetically modified corn, it will have a piece of DNA called the 35S promoter. So in our PCR reaction, we add primers that specifically attach just to this piece of DNA. And then it will make millions of copies of this 35S promoter DNA. So let's set up our PCR reaction. First thing we're gonna do is set our micropipette to 20 microliters. And we're gonna add something called master mix to our reaction. Now master mix has something in it called TAC polymerase. It's a specific type of enzyme that's going to help us make millions of copies of our target DNA sequence. Now you notice here those PCR tubes are much smaller than our regular microtubes. The next thing we're going to add is something called primer mix. Now I mentioned before that primers attach to specific pieces of DNA. So when we're doing PCR, we're not making millions of copies of any type of DNA. We're making millions of copies of our target DNA sequence. And the primers allow us to do that. Our target DNA sequence in this example is that 35S promoter region. The last thing we're gonna to add to our PCR reaction is 10 microliters of the DNA that we extracted from our corn chip sample. So if we think about everything that's gone into this PCR tube, we have our master mix with the TAC polymerase, the primers that are specific for the 35S DNA, and then we added our DNA from the corn chip sample. And we put our sample into the PCR machine, which is called a thermal cycler. It basically heats up and cools down very quickly. And we'll do typically about 35 cycles in two hours before moving on to the last part of our lab. So the last step of our lab is to do a process called gel electrophoresis. We can visualize DNA by running it on an agarose gel like this one. We load our PCR samples with our DNA on one end of the gel and run electricity through the gel in a process called electrophoresis. DNA has a negative charge and will move toward the positive end of our gel box. One way we can then see the DNA is to stain it and in this example expose it to LED light. To see our sample results, we'll head back to our student guide and lesson slides.